we just pray you have a wonderful night. We just pray that you'll just enjoy the students and what they're going to say and do. And that you'll be thanking the Lord for just for being here tonight. And so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to really welcome our students in. They're waiting in the foyer. So please, I want you to make a noise and pretend that you're happy, okay? Um, you can stand on your feet. You can, you can clap your hands. You can shout. Americans, you can holler. You know, you can do whatever you want. But let's give them a huge big welcome. A 2016 spring batch of students of the Bible College of Wales.
120, the battle hymn, going into battle and into victory. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. The sanctuary is where God dwells, Zion is where his people dwell. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Verse 5, may we shout for joy over your victory and lift up our banners in the name of our God. I believe that I as a principal will be getting reports and I'm going to be shouting for joy over your victory. It's um, a delight for me and I consider it a great honour for me to be able to speak to you for a few moments. Um, let me just make sure this is behaving. A few moments, and I'm going to take this off, so if you'd just like to turn the sound down a bit so it doesn't whistle, I'm going to hold it. Speak to you for a few moments on this very important evening for these students upon your graduation. Now, when I was praying earlier on, in fact this morning, uh, I asked the Lord to show me and give me something to speak to this gathering tonight, and particularly these students. And immediately, in my mind's eye, I saw one of these, a polished arrow. And at the same time, a verse of scripture came to my mind, which will be very familiar to many of you. And it's Isaiah 49, 1-3, and I'm going to read it to you now, and I want the students to open their hearts for God to speak into your spirit, to impart a conviction of faith concerning his call and destiny upon your life. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. From my mother's womb, he has spoken my name. He made my mouth a sharpened sword, and in the shadow of his hand he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. And he said to me, you are my servant. But every arrow must have a prepared target to hit. And in the waiting place, the Lord behind the scenes is busy preparing the target for you to hit. He's preparing a nation or a region or a people group or a particular ministry for you to fly to that you may hit it at the right time because if you, if you arrive too early, the harvest isn't ready. And if you arrive too late, you've missed it. But there is a timing in the purposes of God and it is in the, it is in the secret place, the hidden place, that we settle our spirit and wait for his release with patience. The Lord Jesus was sent like an arrow from heaven in the fullness of time. But it was John the Baptist who was sent before him to prepare the way. He just didn't drop out of the sky. He came to a prepared people. Philip went to Samaria and there was a revival in Samaria. But it didn't happen out of the blue. Because Jesus spoke to a Samaritan woman and a Samaritan woman spoke to the village. And the village came out to speak to Jesus. And all of that germinated and percolated over time. That when Philip was sent like an arrow to Samaria, a revival broke out. And Cornelius was prepared. And Peter was sent like an arrow to the Gentiles. The Gentile Cornelius had opened up the Gentile world to the gospel, but it didn't happen out of the blue because an angel came to prepare Cornelius and prepare his family. And when Peter was sent like an arrow to Cornelius' home, he was prepared and the Holy Spirit came from heaven and they received the gospel. Amen. Last, this time a year ago, a young 27-year-old lady, very godly, committed to the Lord, like you, had finished her Bible college studies, and it was her graduation this month, a year ago. The January before that month, the Lord spoke to her and said, don't take up any ministry opportunities and posts that are offered you. And she was offered many because she's a top quality young lady. She said, but wait, 
in March, the Lord spoke to her again. She said, I'm going to send you to Wales. This young lady from Sweden, by the way, she finished her study in Malmo, Sweden. She says, I'm going to send you to Wales and you're going to have a job offer. In May, she wrote this down in her journal just before her graduation, just like you. As she closed her journal, what, writing down what she felt the Lord was saying, her mobile phone rang and she picked it up. And it was a friend that she doesn't speak to very often from Norway. And the friend said to her, Johanna, have you considered going to Wales? I think the Lord wants you there. She wrote that in her journal as well. <coughs> Now it's so, it came to pass, sounds like a, like a Bible verse, verily it did come to pass, but it did come to pass that Sarah and myself got invited to speak at a conference in Sweden. As we went to the conference in Sweden, Johanna was on the organising team. She was sure that I would offer her a job, but the June conference came and went and I didn't offer her a job. Why? Because I didn't know she'd been called to Sweden, she didn't tell me. She was discreet. She wasn't manipulating the purposes of God. She said nothing. Oh. And so I went home. The only thing my, my, me and my wife did offer her was say, come over and help with our new wine leaders conference in July. And uh, she got on a plane, paid for her home ticket, and she volunteered for a few days at the end of July. She thought I was going to offer her a job after volunteering in July, but I didn't. Because I didn't know God had spoken to her. And she went home. But she didn't still respond to the many ministry requests that she was given. She still remained in the quiver. She still kept her heart trusting. And then one night in August, I'm sitting in my living room, and I remember it vividly. I was just sitting there, and something just dropped into my spirit. And it was this. Offer Johanna a job for New Wine Company, New Wine Wales. I shared it with my wife. We felt this would be a good fit, it could be the Lord. In September, we called the board and the trustees of the new wine team together. We shared it with them. We thought, yeah, we need something because the, the work is growing. We said, we're going to, and I phoned her up over Skype and offered her a job subject to contract, subject to a Skype interview. She had the interview, she was accepted. January, sorry, February, she moved to Wales and took up a post. A year and a month later, she's in Wales. And since then, she's fallen in love. <laughs> so she got her destiny. She got a ministry. She got financial support. She's in her target zone. And she's got a, and she's got a committed relationship and she's in love. All that has come through being hidden in the quiver of God. You're called. You're being shaped and fashioned. Thank God for the pressure. Be resilient. Stay in his quiver. Be released at his time. And you will hit your target. God bless you and the Lord be with you. Amen. Thank you, Aunt Mitchell. Yeah. 
uh, his uh, hand and he, he will just bleed mission blood. Uh, Dr. Colin Hurd, uh, your wife Julia, we want to say how much we love you. You've been absolutely amazing. We're going to miss you. And on behalf of the school, the student body, the staff, uh, we wish you God's richest blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, please, let's uh, honor Dr. Colin Hurd for being such an amazing, amazing man of God.